All right, David Harry here, and I've been doing a ton of speed tests and SSD tests for my little cute M4 MacBook Air, and also my little cute M4 Mac Mini, which is quite possibly the cutest desktop PC I've ever had. Anyway, between these two things, they're on their base configurations. Now, I'm leaning into this cuteness thing because they are both cute setups. So what I thought was, I need to get myself a cute SSD to pair up with them. Anyway, so all this cuteness aside, this tiny little SSD, which is the X31 2TB version by SK Hynix, also known as the Beetle, is a 10 gigabits per second USB-C SSD, which pairs up extremely well with both of these Macs. Anyway, what's happened is I've been sitting in the kitchen just like you know, like sitting off and having a coffee and stuff. And of course, I'll take this little tiny MacBook into the kitchen with me, whereas me M4 Max normally stays under the table in clamshell mode for like doing all my proper editing and stuff. But because I've been trying to test like a whole bunch of files with this SSD being transferred in between that MacBook to these two Macs here. I thought to myself, well, hold on a minute. I'm using this like loads at the moment with the MacBook Pro. So I should really do a video about it. Now, to be clear, it is only a 10 gigabits per second SSD. However, just look at the size of it. I mean, you know, it fits in your pocket like without any hassle whatsoever. And like I've just said, I've been using it like, you know, to transfer data to this Mac while it's been sitting in the kitchen, while I've been sitting off having a coffee and stuff like that. So I've actually been using this loads with me MacBook Pro here. Now, granted, I've obviously already got like, you know, super fast and more higher capacity SSDs, but I've been using this loads the last couple of days. So yeah, definitely I've had to do a video about it. So here's the video about it. Now, I'm not going to do any manual bitrate calculations. What I'm going to do here is just to impress upon you the overall speed using activity monitor. Then you can make up your own mind as to whether or not something like this might be useful to you for a MacBook Pro. Okay, so I'm onto the desktop for my MacBook Pro. And as we can see here, this is the M4 Max version. So let me just just close that off now let me just go and show you some info here about this particular x31 ssd so as you can see the capacity is two terabytes or in fact it's just slightly over two terabytes and then the available storage here is 1.45 terabytes because i've already been using it to write data to but importantly it is apfs formatted which is something that i have done to it after connecting it to the mac now as standard the ssd actually comes pre-formed matter to XFAT using MBR. Now the thing is if you plan on sharing one of these SSDs with a Windows or a Linux computer or even sharing it with say portable devices which are running Android or Chrome OS and the likes then I would strongly recommend just leaving it as it comes with the XFAT format and then that's just going to assure you much better compatibility across a broad ranges of operating systems so that's basically the SSD there now the folder that I am going to be testing here is a very practical example and I'll explain why now but first of all let me just show you the size of the folder so this folder is 98.9 gigabytes in size so basically 99 gigabytes it's got 47 items inside of it now this folder is actually something that I've generated from DaVinci Resolve Studio on my M4 Max MacBook Pro so basically Basically, with Inside Resolve, you can do what's called an archive or a, or a DaVinci Resolve archive. So what I've done is to archive one of my projects from this computer, which is my M4 Max, for testing on the M4 MacBook Air. So inside here, I've got like the project and sequence dates and stuff and all the media files for one of the projects that I've already done on the M4 Max. Now, just remember, it's the M4 Max that I use for all my YouTube video editing and stuff. So what I'm doing here is about to like do a video where I put this archive onto the M4 MacBook Air just to see if that can actually play back and do the edits that I would normally do on my M4 Max. So like I say, this particular folder here 
is like you know a super good example of why you would use the external ssd because i'm definitely going to use the external ssd to transfer that folder to another mac okay so what i'm going to do here is to open up activity monitor let me just open up the SSD again. Now, I think I've already said in the introduction to the video that I am not going to be manually timing anything here to do any kind of manual bit rates because I just want to show you an overview of the speeds. So what I'm going to do is just drop that onto the X31. So I'm going from the MacBook's desktop to the X31. So in this instance, I'm obviously testing the write speed for the X31. Now, what we want to do here is just keep an eye on this number which is like the data written number so this is basically the speed at which the x31 is writing its data at and what we're going to see here is that this is going to be super consistently around 950 megabytes per second so it is like really really dead consistent you know and i've done this now with a few things because i've already written like these two test folders to it which i will be transferring to another mac as well so obviously i've been using it already and i already know how consistent it is but like i say as we can see here that 950 megabytes thereabouts is just super consistent anyway i'm just going to speed this up now until the folder is written to the x31 okay so it's written over now and as we could clearly see there and we could even see it on this graph as well it was super consistent with the write speed at being 950 megabytes per second so what i'm going to do now is just to delete that folder from the max desktop there and free up some space and then i'm just going to do the same thing again but this time what i'm testing for is the read speed of the x31 which obviously is going to be influenced by the write speed of the max internal storage however the internal storage on this particular mac is definitely capable of writing faster than the x31 anyway so we're going to get a true idea of the read speed of the x31 so as we're going to see here it's going to fluctuate a little bit so it's going to kind of maybe go between 820 to 880 megabytes per second something like that now we will also see as well these fluctuations in the reading when it is being like you know written back to the mac now i'm not entirely sure but i actually don't think that those very slight fluctuations are actually the x31 i've got a feeling that that is actually the max internal storage doing that and um, because as we could see writing to the x31 was super consistent but bringing it back it's not like it's going all over the place like you know like 100 megabytes up to 800 megabytes or anything but you know it is not quite as consistent and because i've already done a whole bunch of like speed tests and ssd testing with a number of different macs and i'm starting to like realize that there are certain issues involved within all of them i'm going to surmise that you know this variance here that we can see within the right you know the right the right speed and the right pattern as it were and what we can see here i'm going to say that that is probably down to the writing internally of the mac and not necessarily the read speed of the x31 however and nonetheless as we can see it's going to be at least about 820 megabytes per second and it's going to be going up to about 880 so let me just speed up until i get to the end of this okay so that's now written to the max internal storage now as i was just saying you know there were very minor fluctuations there however and as i've already said i've got a feeling that that's actually the mac doing that with its write speed inconsistency and i don't think that's an inconsistency with the read speed on the x31 but nonetheless what we've clearly seen there though is that this x31 is well capable of doing between 800 to 900 megabytes per second for read and write and this folder was about 100 gigabytes in size as well okay so as we have just clearly seen there then this tiny little ssd is more than capable even with a macbook pro now just to be super clear if you're looking for like absolute speed and absolute capacity then no this is definitely not going to be what you want for a macbook pro however if you just want something which is super convenient and small and is just easy to transfer data to and from other macs and stuff especially if those macs 
effects might even be well not just in other rooms but like they could be in other locations and you might just have to take the odd like you know few hundred gigabytes here and there to share data amongst different Macs then yeah you know this is going to be absolutely fantastic for that now like I've already said it is only 10 gigabits per second but consider this none of the Apple Silicon Macs are capable of doing 20 gigabits per second so if you were to go out and buy yourself like you know a 20 gigabits per second ssd they're kind of like wasted on the max so a 10 gigabits one is basically your upper limit if you're just going to be doing like normal usb c or usb 3 but like i say after that point you can then jump to usb 4 if you want to for 40 gigabits per second or 40 gigabits per second thunderbolt 4 or even 80 gigabits per second thunderbolt 5 however for me personally i just think that these ssds are fantastic now there are two things to bear in mind with this i think I think it's SLC cache is somewhere around about 300 gigabytes something like that now when the SLC cache does run out it will plummet as all of these drives do and it will plummet down to about 150 megabytes per second at that point however the one thing that I have noticed is the SLC seems to recover really quickly and then you're back up to writing those high speeds again and stuff so it is really good as far as the structure of the NAND is concerned uh, on top of that as well the reason why I didn't bother doing any type of temperature testing is because it just barely gets warm it is absolutely of no kind of consequence whatsoever the temperatures that it reaches it's absolutely like fine for that as well anyway I think I've done enough and said enough in this video so I'm going to dive off because I still need to do the video with this with this and with this and with that as well and on top of that I've got a whole bunch of other things to do with this thing as well here so i'm diving off anyway there will be product links in the video description below for everything used in the video if you've liked the video please do give us a thumbs up a sub to the channel would be absolutely awesome i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now